I'm a native Houstonian and I'm a local attorney. I'm a part of the Sikh religion, which is the fifth largest religion. We're an integral and growing part of this Houston community. And as you may know, many of our articles of faith include the turban and the beard. And it has an outward appearance. This has caused many of my brothers to be rejected by public places simply for the way that they look. Rejection from public places enforces stereotypes and racial profiling. Public policy dictates equality. This hurts our general right to freedom. This has never been a bathroom issue. This is a fair housing issue, a fair employment issue, a treating humans fairly issue. An issue that our federal government is instilling through the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Constitution of the United States. This Equal Rights Ordinance needs to be enforced for the most diverse city in the nation. Let us lead and not be led. Thank you. Your time Ms. has expired. You, are a, uh, you said you were an attorney? Yes, I am. It, it seems to me not a hard concept, and I'm going to ask you that if I'm, if, if I'm a baker and I don't make swastika cakes for anybody, I'm not discriminating. But if I say I'm not going to make it for you because of who you are, I'm discriminating. Is that the way you read this as well? You know what, Mayor? I just think this is such a no-brainer issue. I just, I don't even know why we're having these hearings, to be honest with you. We're asking for equal rights for all, no exceptions. Chair recognizes Councilmember Wynn. Thank you, Mayor. Would you like to wrap up your statement there? I just was going to urge that you vote in favor for the ordinance for the greater good of the city, the most diverse city in the nation. Thank Chair you. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilmember Boykins. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to commend this wonderful, brilliant attorney here and, and, and for coming down and taking time out. I, you know, it's amazing to me. We, like I said, we've been dealing with this for almost two weeks now. Motion to extend, please. Craving opposed. And, and the word communication is extremely important. It's very clear we're not communicating. Very clear. And what I mean by that, prior to this week, the issue was the restroom. My understanding has been there will be an amendment to take care of that. I don't think in the city of Houston people are discriminating against, if they understand what's being said, will discriminate against someone for fair housing, employment, a restaurant, a hotel, or wearing a turban. What I mean by that, this council is not looking at it from a perspective of we're telling same-sex couples they can't come into a restaurant and eat. And I think that people are confused, and that's what Ms. Bell was talking about, what's being presented. The restrooms, my understanding, will be taken out. At that point, I'm hearing, I heard Reverend Lilly and others say, why not start it over for another two or three weeks and bring in stakeholders to look at the impact, whatever it is. But I can get most to extend. But I feel comfortable to say that we will come to an agreement. I don't think even the people on the opposite side, ma'am, is against a person's choice in terms of going into a restaurant or a hotel. They may not agree with it, because I'm a diehard Christian. I'm, you know, everybody have their biblical beliefs. But they're not going to discriminate against someone for going into a restaurant or, or discriminate. So I think the hurdle, let me just be clear, the hurdle was the, re the restrooms. In my community, that's all they talked about. I know, but that's it all never they talked the about issue over the weekend. With. That hurdle has been crossed. I think we have to do a better job communicating, getting this thing uh, delayed, possibly, and getting stakeholders involved. I guarantee you, with the gay community at the table, I guarantee you we'll come out this thing holding hands. So what we're doing is wasting everybody's time coming down here, venting and vetting their position. And I don't really think everybody know what the issue is. It's well, very confusing. If I may respond. Yes, ma'am. I was actually on that same phone call. Are you Motion. 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 Thank you. I was actually on that conference call with David Feldman, the attorney, who addressed all the issues. And I think delaying it any further doesn't make any sense because, again, these are issues that are 
frankly, black and white. And I don't think that any of those organizations that were on the conference call came back and said, you know what, we actually have a couple more changes. And the ones that did, I will tell you that on the phone call, he took in all of our input and made changes for even meetings that I was a part of apart from that phone call. Delaying this isn't going to change anything. But, it's still but, the same issue. But deciding it in one day, with, won't, you think it'll have the same? What We've kind already of delayed it for three that? weeks. I was here two weeks ago as well. We did a lot of lists. We've been listening a lot. Yeah. I'm just saying to have a dialogue and have input from people who, and, and I guarantee the outcome may be the same, ma'am. Yes or no, whatever the case may be. I'm just saying, I just think other stakeholders, it wouldn't hurt to have input from other communities because this is not about discriminating to say a same-sex couple can't go into Let's a restaurant. Let's not mistake that, that this is already federal law. We're just instituting it in the city. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. And I still think you're a great lawyer. 1964. <laughs> Discussion favoring opposed motion carries. There's still council members in the queue. Council, we're starting. Would you repeat again what you just said? I was saying that this is already a part of federal law, the, si Thank the you. civil rights in 1964, so it should be a no-brainer for you. the city but to also institute something that's so important to but us. Thank you. You made my point, though. It's already federal law. With that no, said, that's not the point, though. <laughs> with that said, with that said, um, the other thing that I, I have a little heartburn about what you said, I appreciate you coming down. You do that's a great okay. job. I have heartburn about the fact that there's 2.1 million people in this city, and I don't believe that everyone still knows that this is happening at City Hall and the changes that may impact their world. So while you may have been included, there's council members that didn't get information as quickly as you did. So we're the ones that are charged with representing 200,000 people approximately in my case in District A in Northwest Houston, and then you, you multiply that times around the table. So. We're, we're very, we're taking this very seriously and representing our, our constituents and I just, I really am concerned that the sense of urgency because we are not smart enough to figure it out. Motion. <laughs> Thank you. Well, motion favoring opposed, motion carries. Was that a question or you just made a can I? Well, can I respond to it anyway? Um, I understand else? that you guys haven't had the opportunity or whatever it may be on your own personal level. I will say that I've been involved in the city politics and watched um, people come through in here and out of here, and you're not going to get any more response than you've already gotten, mm -hmm. and I just don't see the difference that this week would make from the next. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Councilmember Bradford. Thank you, Mayor. I think discussion is always good, and, and it's always healthy. It doesn't matter how good you think you have it. You can always solicit input from the other side, and uh, to hear you say you don't know why the hearings are being had, I don't understand that because uh, it, it, 101 law school, you know, they kind of teach us, you know, both sides of the issue. And if, if, if there's an amendment that we received about two hours ago, I want to know the impact of this particular amendment. You know, I agree. And, and also, uh, if you're ready to roll and vote yes, uh, as has been presented today, what is the impact of 17-51B being removed and A still remaining? Can you tell me that? Well, I still think that, again, the issue still is on that Section 17, but what about the rest of the ordinance that helps the, out the fairness? Sixteen time, favor opposed, motion carries. That, that's, that's pretty non-responsive. Well, okay, let me be more responsive. Thank you kindly. Um, I believe that if you are, if you have a selected member or selected group or class of uh, members that are being discriminated against, there, there is a need for an ordinance. Yes. And so I think that that ordinance and that portion of that ordinance would protect that, protect that class that needs that protection. So if there is a group of people that need it, we need to provide it. Yes. And so that's why it makes it a black and white issue for me, because I feel like that cl those classes have already spoken out and said, hey, we need protection. And if they're saying, hey, we need protection, we need to give it to I them. I appreciate your explanation, and, and I accept your explanation, because for me, I, I committed to supporting uh, a non-discrimination ordinance. Uh, I stand by that because I think that uh, no one should be discriminated against for any reason. But I want to see the language. I want to work through the language and make sure what the consequences are, what are the unintended consequences. So just don't expect me to roll with anything that's thrown out there. I want to work through it. As you know with the law, we work through everything anyway. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I need another motion to extend time. Just favoring opposed, motion carries. Councilmember Cohen. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here and for uh, your articulate presentation. I just want to get a couple of things clear as well. 
Um, you made the point that um, at federal level we have these laws. Um, correct. Yes. But if someone if someone um, is told that they can't go somewhere or they won't be served somewhere, and we have that federal law, right? If I'm told as a woman or an, as a senior, I can take that to court. Right. Right. But I have to have a lot of money to do that, in and I have court. to live until I'm about 300 okay. before it <laughs> will right. ever be heard. That's the so distinction. So the point of our the point of our passing an ordinance for the city is so that people can have local response to these issues in a timely fashion. And that's the distinction I wanted to make, exactly that. That if we're already doing this on a federal level, obviously we know the ramifications <laughs> legally and everything else. So if we put it in a city level, it should be no issue. Seconded, favoring, opposed, motion carries. That was exactly my point, that we needed something on a local level so that way it's more accessible for people, for us to get the, the actual fines and things like that, or the scare for people to understand that it's not okay to treat people discriminatorily. Okay. Thank you very much. Councilor Kubash. So uh, you're saying that the, the, everything that's in this ordinance is already protected in federal law? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the majority of what I've read, I know that we have some sort of federal protection. However, okay, as uh, um, let me ask the city attorney, okay. what what classes that are in the ordinance are not currently protected by by federal law? Well, first of all, council member, we, we've got different forms of discrimination that are addressed in this ordinance, so I would have to take them one by one. Okay, under fair housing. Uh, sexual orientation, gender identity, um, uh, genetic information uh, is not currently covered. Uh, under uh, public accommodations, uh, sexual orientation, gender identity, uh, familial status, genetic information currently not covered. Under employment, sexual orientation, gender identity, not covered under either federal or state law. Thank you so much. And, and let me say this to you. As a council member, I'm going to be here until it's over. If I get up, I'm just going to the men's room and coming right back. Because I'm glad for all of us here. I'm, I appreciate all the discussion. Thank We're not in a hurry. Ms. 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 Singh, thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Uh, uh, that we had a previously called speaker and he is now in the chamber 